Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on all our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the set B and continuing ahead with our chapter 4 sample questions of this particular set. So far we have covered a lot of questions from the chapter 4 and we have few more remaining to talk about and that's what we'll be looking ahead as a part of our, this particular tutorial and let's have a look on the next question. The next question here we have is question number 26, which of the following statement best describes how test cases are derived from a use case? At this point, any particular person should start recalling the learning and understanding about a use case. In particular, what exactly a use case is, what are the specific characteristics of it, and what kind of uh, test levels it can support in order to prepare the test cases for it. So say for example, if we talk about the integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing are all basically common test levels where we make use of use cases to derive the test cases. But instead of you know just limiting yourself to that, you should also be concentrating on the options and look forward to what you think is the right answer dependent on the given answers to you. So starting with option A, test cases are created to exercise defined basic, exceptional, and error behaviors performed by the system and the test in collaboration with the actors. Looks pretty much correct as per the use case. The uh, a use case is generally to exhibit a real world scenario between the user and the system. And here user is being referred as an actor who would be performing certain actions on the application for a particular use case. And a use case certainly includes characteristics which showcases a main path and uh, also includes the exceptional uh, paths of uh, the same use case at any point what errors may happen where the use case can be terminated or reverted back to the initial state is all a part of it so it looks pretty much good but uh, let's confirm with the other remaining options option b says test cases are derived by identifying the components included in the use case and creating integration test that exercises the interaction of these components so integration testing makes use of use cases that's pretty much true but if you look at the first part of it it says test cases are derived by identifying the components included in the use case uh, so there are no particular components as such where the use cases are applicable we don't test any components as a part of it in fact it's not applicable to the component testing because use case is collection of two or more modules put together and can only be used at integration or beyond levels. C, the test cases are generated by analyzing the interaction of actor with the system to ensure the user interfaces are easy to use. Now that's the word which you have to pressurize on called as easy to use. The option has been written in a very, very, very tricky way because right from the beginning, if you continue reading, you may not concentrate at the end that what exactly they changed the subject to because they were all talking about it is all about integration testing to test the interfaces. Yes, that's true, but that is not done to check easy to use, which is user friendliness, right? And user friendliness is a non-functional testing. And so far we have not discussed about it and use cases are not related to integration and usability at any cost. D, test cases are derived to exercise each of the decision points in the business process flow of the use case to achieve 100% decision coverage. Even if you remember that what are the techniques which are covered in the chapter four, you would be able to opt out the option D because decision coverage is a white box testing technique and use case is a black box testing technique and they are different. Right? So putting up all together, the right answer here is A, test cases are created to exercise defined basic, exceptional, and error behaviors performed by the system and the test in collaboration with actors, which meets the desired definition of use case. Let's jump into the next question now, question number 27, which is talking about the statement coverage. So which of the following description of statement coverage is correct? And we have very straightforward four options given to you. And let's have a look on that. A, statement coverage is a measure of number of lines of the source code exercised by the test. No, not all the number of lines. This is more of like pictorial representation of a source code which talks about the collection of nodes and the branches. And nodes are something which you measure. 
And if in, in fact, all they're asking you is to recall the formula of statement coverage that how do you measure it? And statement coverage is measured as number of nodes or statements exercised by the test divided by total number of statements in the code multiplied by 100. So A does not certainly tell me the answer because it's talking about the number of lines in the code and that could be different. And I cannot just say that's a statement coverage percentage measure. B, statement coverage is a measure of proportion of executable statement in the source code exercised by the test. Yes, it's a proportion. It's a ratio of number of uh, statements exercised by the test divided by total number of statements. And of course, the percentage cover coverage is measured through these calculations. C, statement coverage is a measure of percentage of lines of source code without comments exercised by the test. Percentage of lines of source code again. No, it's all about statements. So we should be measuring the statements, which is executable statements, not the lines of code again. D, statement coverage is a measure of number of executable statement in the source code exercised by the test. No, it's not number. Number is basically the count. So I don't just simply count the number of uh, statements available in the line of code given to you exercised by the test. It's more a proportion, the ratio that how many you covered, how many more to go, right? So again, a statement coverage is a measure of number of statements covered by the test divided by number of statements in the code. So the right answer here is B, statement coverage is a measure of proportion of executable statements because not all the statements are executable in the source code exercised by the test, which is very important. Let's look at the next question here, which is talking similarly about decision coverage. And uh, now you should be pretty much straightforward, sure, that which should be the right option. So the question number 28 says, which of the following description of decision coverage is correct? Option A, decision coverage is a measure of percentage of possible paths through the source code exercised by the test. Now, that's an answer to path coverage, which is not at all in our syllabus, is covered in the advanced level technical test analyst. B, decision coverage is a measure of the percentage of business flows through the component exercised by the test. No, it's not the measurement of business flows. That's a different subject altogether. C, Decision coverage is a measure of if statement in the code that are exercised with both the true and false outcomes. Sounds a little tricky and you may pick this as the right answer, but let's look at D before we confirm that. Decision coverage is a measure of proportion of decision outcomes in the source code exercised by the test. Now, if you now start comparing the C and D, it's not a measure of uh, the if statements, we just don't measure the condition. In fact, we come out with various possible paths between these conditions to be covered, right? So yes, are we talking about covering true and false outcomes? Oh yes, of course, but what about if it is nothing, right? If it is equal to, so there's also a third path possible when something is true, something is not true, but there might be possible other outcomes from that right? So a condition or a decision can make anything, but not about the statements again, and not just limited to true and false. And it's not a measure of if statements just for the true and false. It's more of a proportion. It's a ratio to be measured that how many decisions have your test covered divided by number of decisions in the code. So D is looking more appropriate than C, right? So that's where we pick the right answer as D, decision coverage is measure of the proportion of decision outcomes in the source code exercised by test as the decision outcomes can be many. And it's just not the count of statements or decisions. It's more of like the proportion, which is an important word to be concentrated here. That's where we opted D over C. Well, that was all we had from the set B for the question number four, oh, sorry, chapter number four. We'll be looking forward to the next chapter in our next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. Should you have anything else, feel free to drop a comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.